Okay, welcome to the fourth video of chapter 10, which is section 10.4. Use inscribed angles and polygons. There's only one objective for this video. We're going to calculate the measures of inscribed angles in a circle. So, so far, in the 17 seconds this video has been going, you've heard the term inscribed angles twice. So we should probably define what is an inscribed angle before moving on. An inscribed angle is an angle with the vertex on the circle. So in the figure we're given, it says angle JKL is an inscribed angle. So this is JKL. It's inscribed because K, the vertex, is located on the circle itself. So, so far we've done inscribed angles, and then remember from before that we did central angles when the vertex was at the center of the circle. When you have an inscribed angle, the arc that contains it is called the intercepted arc. So in this case, arc JL, this arc right here, that's called the intercepted arc. So besides knowing what an inscribed angle is, you have to know that the measure of the angle is one half the measure of the intercepted arc. Okay, so in this case, if arc JL was 100 degrees, the angle then would be 50 degrees. The angle is half of the arc. Okay, so you're going to say it says circle formula sheet. Um, you should have that by now, but we will fill it out in class, so don't worry about that. Okay, so we have two examples. Example one and example two. Um, so example number one says, what is the measure of TQR? So it's looking for this arc right here. Well, we know that the angle is 90, and the angle is going to be one half of the arc. So 90 is one half of arc TQR. If I multiply both sides by 2, I get the measure of TQR to be 180 degrees. Just a little fun fact, 180. What's special about that? Hopefully you remember that means that we have a semicircle. So TQR is actually a semicircle. Looking at example 2, we are told that the measure of arc GA is 100 degrees. We are asked to find the measure of angle GNA and GTA. Starting with GNA. GNA is an inscribed angle. Because its vertex is on the circle. That means that the angle will be half of the arc. If arc GA is 100 degrees, then angle GNA is going to be 50 degrees. Now arc, or angle GTA, the vertex is at the center, so this is called a central angle. If the vertex is at the center, then the angle will be equal to the arc. So GTA is going to be 100 degrees. Okay, moving on. Here's one for you to try. I'm giving you the measure of angle BAP to be 20 degrees. You have to find arc BC and arc AB. Pause the video right now and try it on your own, please. Okay, so let's see how we did. Angle BAC should be half of arc BC. Angle BAC is 20 degrees. That's going to be half of BC. If I multiply both sides by 2, I get arc BC to be 40 degrees. Next thing I notice is that ABC is a semicircle. It's going to add to be 180. So I have arc AB. If I add arc BC, it's going to be a semicircle. It's going to be 180. So AB plus BC is 40 equals 180. So then I get arc AB to be 140 degrees. So hopefully that went well. Um, if not, hopefully you now see what mistake you made. Um, we have one more example before we're going to move on to another theorem. 
Okay, so here's the example. It's similar, except we have variables now instead of just plain old numbers. Um, so you are asked to find the value of x. You need to remember that the angle is one-half of the arc. Pause the video and try this one on your own, please. Good luck. Okay, let's see how we did. I gave you a big hint by reminding you that the angle is equal to one half of the arc. The angle in this case is 5x. That's angle BAC. So I get 5x equals one half. The arc is 9x plus 21. You have two options here. You can distribute the 21, or I mean distribute the one half, or you can get rid of it. What I'm going to choose to do is multiply both sides by 2. 2 times 5x gives me 10x. On the right side, 1 half and 2 cancel each other, so I'm left with just 9x plus 21. If I subtract 9x, I get x equals 21. So hopefully that one went well for you. You really have to think on these examples. You can't just um, blatantly set things obvious, because sometimes we're tempted to set 5x equal to 9x plus 21, but you have to remember an inscribed angle is half of the intercepted arc. Okay, so here's our next theorem. It says if two inscribed angles intersect the same arc, then the angles are congruent. And then you have this figure. So what I want you to notice is that looking at this pink angle here, it intercepts this arc. Then we have this green angle intercepts the same exact arc. Then we have this purple or this orange angle that intercepts the same arc. Okay, they all intercept the same arc, so they're all going to be congruent. So the pink angle, the green angle, the orange angle, the brown angle, they're all congruent. They all intercept the same arc. Okay, we're going to use that idea to talk about inscribed and circumscribed. So you have this figure, you have quadrilateral BIRD, so quadrilateral bird, and then you have a circle drawn around it. So circumscribed is the outside shape. And then inscribed is the inside shape. So in this case, quadrilateral bird is inscribed in a circle. So it just means it's inside of a circle. You could also say that there's a circle circumscribed around bird. So there's a circle drawn around the outside. Okay, when it comes to circumscribed and inscribed, there's two more theorems. Uh, the first one says, if an angle is inscribed in a semicircle, then it is. Well, looking at the figure, we have this angle here that's inscribed in a semicircle. Because it's inscribed, it's going to be half of the semicircle. So half of 180 is going to be 90. If an angle is inscribed in a semicircle, then it is a right angle. Likewise, if an inscribed angle is right then it intercepts a semicircle. And that should make sense. Semicircle is 180. If the angle is half of the arc, it has to be half of 180. It has to be right. And then this is another important theorem that we're going to do with some examples on the next page. A quadrilateral can be inscribed in a circle if and only if the opposite angles are supplementary. So in this case up here, we have a quadrilateral bird that's inscribed in a circle. That is only possible because the opposite angles are supplementary. So here, angle one add angle or angle I, I mean, add angle D is 180. Angle B add angle R equals 180. We just know that they're equal to 180. We don't know if any of them are congruent. They just sum to be 180. So let's flip the page and do some more examples. Okay, so for three, it says find the measures of all four angles. So I have this quadrilateral that's inscribed in a circle. That's only possible if the opposite angles are supplementary. So in this case, I have 2y plus 5x equals 180. 
and then I have 3y plus 3x equals 180. So I need to find x and y and then find all four angles. What we're going to notice is we have x and y, two variables, so I need two equations. I have two equations. The only issue is that they both have um, an x and a y. So I'm going to have to solve a system. My personal preference is to use elimination. So I'm going to multiply my top equation by negative 3 and my bottom equation by 2. I'm looking to eliminate the y's. My top equation becomes negative 6y, negative 15x equals negative 540. Bottom equation becomes 6y plus 6x equals 360. I'm ready to add. My y's cancel, which is good. I was trying to eliminate them. I then have negative 9x equals negative 180. Dividing by negative 9, I get x equals 20. Now to find y, I have to substitute back in. I'm going to use the top equation. So rewriting, I have 2y plus 5x equals 180. So 2y plus 5 multiplied by 20 equals 180. I have 2y plus 100 equals 180. Subtracting 100, I get 2y equals 80. Dividing by 2, I get y equals 40. Now, I am not finished. The question is, find the measures of all four angles. So I'm going to start with angle R. 2 multiplied by y, 2 multiplied by 40 is going to be 80 degrees. Angle A, 3 multiplied by x, 3 multiplied by 20 is going to be 60 degrees. Angle T, 5x, 5 multiplied by 20 is going to be 100 degrees. And then 3y, 3 multiplied by 40 is going to be 120. As a mental check, are our opposite angles supplementary? Well, 80 add 100 is 180. 120 add 60 is 180. So my answer checks out. Okay, so you have an example now to do. It says, did we accomplish the objective? Our only objective was to calculate the measures of inscribed angles. So we learned that an inscribed angle is half of the measure of the intercepted arc. Then we found out that if two angles intercept the same arc, they're going to be congruent. Last thing that we just did an example with is a quadrilateral that is inscribed in a, semi or in a circle can only occur when the opposite angles are supplementary. So when you come to class tomorrow, I will be checking your answer for this problem that you have the correct values of x and y. Please make sure you show work. If you would like to, you may move on, and there are two more examples. My suggestion would be to pause the video and do these examples on your own, and then come back and listen to the answers. Okay, I'm going to start by giving you the answers. The ex answer to example number 6 is 123 degrees. The answer to example 7 is x equals 14 over 17. Now, now I'm going to explain the problem. So if you would like to listen, great. If you got them right, you may stop here. Example 6, calculate the measure of arc VST. So I'm looking for this arc right here. I have part of it. I have the 39, but I also need the ST. Now I have this inscribed angle. I know that an inscribed angle is going to be half of the intercepted arc. The angle is 51, the arc is going to be twice that, so the arc is going to be 102. I'm going to use this to find the measure of ST. Remember that the entire circle is 360, all the arcs that is. So ST is going to be 360, subtract 135, subtract 102, subtract 39, in which case I get 84 degrees. So ST is 84 degrees. Now, the measure of VST is going to be VS add ST. VS is 39. ST is 84. When I add them, I get 123 degrees. For example 7, 
I know that the angle is one half of the arc. My angle in this case is 10x. That's going to be equal to one half of the 3x plus 14. Me personally, I don't really like the one half, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. So I have 20x equals. On the right side, the 1 half and the 2 cancel, so I get 3x plus 14. If I subtract 3x, I get 17x equals 14. Dividing by 17, I get x equals 14 over 17. So those were a few extra examples. Uh, hopefully they went well. Please bring any questions that you have to class tomorrow. Bye.